Western Isles Council at Stornoway and within the Town Hall on the 26th day of June, 1996, which day the Council did, in pursuance of a resolution of the said Council, on the 26th day of March, 1996, in accordance with section 206 of the Local Government Scotland Act 1973, admit and receive, and do hereby admit and receive, Duncan Matheson Morrison Esquire, MBE of Stornoway, Isle of Lewis, Western Isles, to be an honorary freeman of the Western Isles area as a person of distinction and in recognition of his eminent service to the community. In witness whereof, we have caused the common seal of the Western Isles Council to be herewith affixed, and the Freedom Scroll, a copy of which is included in your official programme, has now been signed by the convener, the vice convener, the director of administration and legal services, and myself on behalf of the council. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Stewart. Now we will proceed to sign the roll. Now we will sign on behalf of the council. I invite the photographers now that want to come up to the stage and put the sentence in the stone. Mr. Convener, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I thought I would like to share with you memories of two incidents which Of two and 
and put mountain somewhere have had a bearing on my being on this platform today. The first is one of my earliest recollections. My mother took me at the age of five to a concert in the old town hall where we went and ushered to the not very expensive seats. And I was squirmed this way and that way to see the platform but to no avail. My mother was quite happy listening to a favorite Gaelic singer who was then, Damdak was a young girl at that time who became the first collector of Louis songs called Ellen Frug. Gallic singers were very rare on a town hall platform in those days. I distinctly remember thinking that as soon as I was old enough, I would make, my, make sure that my mother would have a front seat. <laughs> The opportunity came sooner than I expected. Two years later, at the age of seven, at a production of a school musical play called A Doll's Wedding, I was one of ten suitors for the hand of the doll. <laughs> I was perched on the platform singing my heart out and at the same time waving to my mother who was down in our front <laughs> My part as a suitor was an apothecary an apothecary learned will surely not be spurned. A grand name they had for chemists in those days. <laughs> but spurned I was. Along with eight other suitors. And the door chose a soldier a good-looking boy dressed in scarlet and dripping with medals. <laughs> John Murdoch was the lucky boy. <laughs> John Murdoch became a councillor in the Old Town Council. Nothing much has changed Counselors still get the best part. <laughs> it must have been a taste of things to come because as I didn't want a front seat for myself, it was to be the platform and nothing else <laughs> for me. <coughs> the other inc incident I would mention had a bearing on my return to Lewis to teach music in rural schools with my partner, the late Canon Sidney McEwen. We were en route to Australia and New Zealand on the good ship Tamaroa. And we were out to give a concert. In those days it was a six weeks voyage and we were asked to give a concert for the, and we thought it a good idea to invite 
some of uh, the ship's crew to take part. I knew there were a good number of Isles men on board that would, we hoped, would help with the concert. The English and the Irish boys danced and sang, no bother, but the Lewis boys were so shy, they couldn't, not one of them could come forward. I thought then that if I ever got the chance to teach in Lewis schools, I would try my best to do everything I could to bring out the natural talent that was latent there. I got the chance in 1949, but I had a hard time getting the secondary boys to sing. It was considered sissy. <laughs> Once they left the primary, they, they wouldn't sing. And so in two of the country schools there were pianos, and there I showed up playing all the popular songs of the day. I had no bother then. About this time, I was helping Tom Kennedy to get his Lord Gold Medal. He asked me what my fee would be, and I said I had never charged a fee for teaching singing because I couldn't sing myself after the private state. But if he would come with me to the secondary school, and sing for the big boys, which he did. And I had no more bother after that. It was nothing but, please sir, we make a choir, please sir, we'll sing this. And then it was no bother. I would like to take this opportunity to pass on to the hundreds of former pupils and their teachers my thanks for the pleasure they gave me. In helping to promote and preserve the culture of the Hebrides. I acknowledge that this is a great honor you have bestowed on me to be honored by my, by my fellow Islesmen with the ultimate accolades. Thank you, and thank you again. Thank you.